What is a kami? Kami is a difficult word to translate. It can translate as God, deity, spirit, or supernatural being. However, none of these words really define exactly what a kami is, and they also hint at other supernatural beings of Japanese folklore, such as yokai and obake. On top of this, there are many different interpretations of kami within the Shinto belief itself. For this reason, I've taken some creative liberties in my novel on what kami is. In simplified terms, a kami is a revered figure in the Shinto belief that is a force of nature. Kami are almost countless in numbers because everything in this world contains its own life force, so they are therefore of kami, including people. They have their own stratified society, and there are places where kami are more concentrated and powerful, usually in places of exceptional natural beauty. It is best to think of kami of having their own separate society, one step removed from the waking world. And yet, kami are not entirely from a different plane of existence like the gods we know of in Western culture. They are very much of this world, though they cannot be seen. The closest concept we have to this is Mother Nature, though if you imagine Mother Nature split up into multiple component parts of nature, including some aspects that aren't so natural, then you're getting closer to the idea of what a kami is. On top of that, kami are not omnipotent like the Western gods, nor are they wholly benevolent nor malevolent. They are a mixture of good and evil, some more good than others, some more evil than others. And neither are they all-powerful, though some are certainly more powerful than others. Kami have no fixed home, yet in the real world Shinto shrines are used to offer worship to particular kami. This is where there is a tangible connection between the real world and the world of the kami. And because there are so many kami, the number and variety of shrines around Japan is huge ranging from tiny, personal shrines in the home to vast complexes the size of a small town. As mentioned, kami are like a separate society. And within that society, there are families represented by a family of shrines that are connected to each other. There are basically 10 different groups of shrines within Japan and each group is defined by different physical characteristics, as well as the reasons why you would pray at that shrine. Each shrine group has different shrines of sizes and significance spread across the land, with a head shrine as the main shrine of that family. For example, one of these shrine families is Fushimi Inari. They are characterized by rows of multiple tori gates of a slight orange color, and they are guarded by fox deities. The head shrine in Kyoto has over 10,000 tori. Fushimi Inari is where one would go to pray for good business, so the tori at Fushimi Inari in Kyoto are all engraved with the names of donating companies. If this still sounds ambiguous, that is kind of the point. Shinto scholars argue that this vagueness of the definition of kami is deliberate, as human beings cannot possibly grasp the concept of what a kami truly is. In my novel Kami, I have had to take some creative liberties to more clearly define a kami to the reader, while still retaining that sense of mystery and otherworldliness. I hope that when you read the book, you will still experience the spirit of the kami.